So we're in Clovis, California, installing some uh, faucets and whatnot out here. Uh, starting over at the veggie sink, um, we've got a new faucet provided by the homeowner, and uh, then also a filtration kit with the faucet as well. So the one in the middle, that's it's a Moen, and then of course your part number sitting right here. Moen's phone number and part number right there. Any trouble with it, it's a limited lifetime guarantee. I do recommend registering these products. That way when you call them, you're not searching around for your receipt somewhere. So just up, upload a copy of your receipt, and then they'll replace parts for life up to and including the entire faucet. So that's a kitchen faucet. We're checking it right now for leaks. Everything looks good down there. We did install an Aquasana filtration system for you. The only thing I like about the Aquasana faucet is down here. It's a hollowed out uh, metal um, mounting plate, and you got to really, really tighten it down, and it kind of crushes it, loses its flexibility. We have the same system at our house, and over a period of time, this gets loose. This base starts spinning back and forth, so uh, it's, it's a mounting issue, but it is tightened down. You know, all you're doing with this is just a nice little quarter turn, one finger on, one finger off, and it's good. Right now, we're flushing it out 10 minutes to get all the carbon fines out of the system, and you're ready for your, uh, your purified water. Uh, it's a triple filter system down here. You can see uh, one, two, three, Aquasana. It's got a little battery up on top. You'll be able to see that. Get a flashlight in there. It's just a little tab. Uh, at about six months, you're going to start hearing a beep. When you turn the water on, you'll start hearing a, a beep or a, a solid sound, high-pitched. That means it's time to change these filters. And, of course, there's the filter wrench sitting on the bottom of the cabinet right there. We didn't touch anything else back here, uh, garbage disposal, whatnot. We did have to give you a new shutoff valve right here. That guy would not shut down, which means uh, to work on the sink, you would have to go out and shut the water off to the home every single time. Uh, normally, you don't have to do that, you know, work on a sink, but when you do, you're stuck. you got to shut the whole house down. So we did give you a new it's quarter turn on, quarter turn off, so that's good. And then uh, additionally, there's a T on top that connects the faucet going up, and then out the side is the, the poly pipe that goes over to the filtration side on the intake side. Over here coming off the faucet, and I don't know if I can get a picture up in there, but uh, coming off the bottom of the faucet, and I can't, but that's fine. Uh, the faucet is up there, guaranteed. Comes over to this side, and so this is the output side of the filtration kit. Um, so you've got um, sediment pre-filter, a clarion filter, a clarion filter, this carbon block, and then also it adds back in your minerals, your calcium, magnesium, whatnot. So you've got pure water with the minerals added back in. It's just a loose bracketry. The way that it's mounted, you can take that whole top off right there. You can lift this whole thing out of there because the hoses were left long. They're not cut short. You could actually lift it, pull it out of there, take off your canisters, and then the very top part of these canisters, these unscrew. The top part comes off. Uh, well, first of all, these disconnect so and you'll see that the grab onto these you unscrew it quarter turn it drops out and then to change the filter you got to take that little wrench and um and, uns and unscrew it and get the new filters in there it's pretty it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy and your documentation is on the the table in the uh, guest room dining room front room whatever the entry room is uh, along with your boxes from now so that's this over here so that new valve you know we're not going to get greedy out here we give you a price on a couple things and uh, you know, we, we hadn't given you a price on the filtration. We were going to do a uh, $200 install and see if we could, you know, uh, discount it some. Unfortunately, we cannot, and not really because of the filtration. Uh, it, it does warrant a full $200 install, but mainly because of this next project over here. So uh, you had mentioned to us that the waste system down here was just kind of a, a train wreck, and we agreed. We got here. The only way to access the faucet, as you can tell, back here is to drop everything. So what we had to do is take out the garbage disposal, take out the weight, the old waste kit. This is all brand new, by the way. Take out the waste kit, drop it all down, get up in there, install everything first, and then reassemble it. So uh, the only thing that was wrong with the discharge portion of the disposal is the plug was not knocked out. Was not knocked out, and uh, so that discharge line from the dishwasher was going up to an air gap, and then a seven eighths hose over to the uh, disposal and um, there was no way for the water to drain because there was a plastic, hard plastic plug in it. So we knocked the plug out, remounted the disposal, and now uh, to accommodate your, um, you know, right, over, right under these two holes is your high loop. That's your waste kit. Right back here you can see the drain lines. That's inch and a half ABS there and there. So it's a high loop because it's an island. And so there's no way to get anything in these two holes. They were already covered up when we got here, so that's fine. 
So uh, we'd asked if you wanted the air gap here or you want your soap dispenser. And you opted for soap dispenser, so we put it in. And then we gave you a high loop. You can see, I'm not gonna be able to take a picture with my camera um, because it's on the left-hand side of my camera, but back up in there, um, yeah, I won't be able to see it. Back up in there, that's the high loop. So it goes up, and you'll, see, you'll be able to see it better when you, when you get home. It goes up to the side of the sink, up against the wall. It's got a little strap down low to support it. And then of course, uh, it loops back down and gravity feeds. So it goes up high, real high, and then it gravity feeds. We'll show you a picture from over here. You can see it comes from over there and gravity feeds back down. And hopefully I won't flip my camera when I try and take a picture of this. You can see right there, we got it supported as well. And you can see it, you know, right here, it's got nice gravity drain down. So it goes up real high and then drains down. That's what a high loop is. So anyways, it's tied back in. Um, Existing disposal, that's yours, so we just remounted it. Gave you a new tubular extension kit. The old one was sitting right on top of that water line back there and you couldn't even get to it. Now it's completely accessible. We did have to cut your waste out in the back because it was right underneath the hose. You can see this line is directly underneath that hose. If we had left it there, you would always have that weight catching on that line. So we had to cut that out, 45 over. Same thing over here, a couple 22s, and then reinstall that high loop. And I know I'm maybe talking above uh, your understanding of plumbing, but uh, normally they just put those loops right in the way and then there's a conflict with the faucet. So when you go to use that, it goes, it, you can pull it all the way out and pull it all the way back in. As you can tell here, it pulls out and it goes back in. Otherwise it would it would get hung up and it wouldn't wouldn't close back in all the way. So uh, hot side's yours. We just connected the hot and cold water. That valve is yours, the cold valve is yours. Um, we gave you a new telescoping kit coming over to the disposal. That's your 90 degree arm right there. But that's our little extension right there. That's our telescoping kit. That's our extension. That's our brand new tubular trap going over to the arm. So uh, that was part of the discussion. You know, I didn't know if you wanted us to replumb it, but, you, but it was tilting sideways and it was, you couldn't get in and work on anything. So it had to come out anyways. I didn't want to reinstall the old piping. So you got new piping. Uh, like I say, we'll give you a good price on the work that we've done. Um, you know, we'll talk to your wife first and she can call you first. We don't want, want you to feel like we're taking advantage of you, but we did spend some time underneath the cabinet. So, uh, that's these two projects. And then we're going to go in the back room and uh, work on the shower. We'll take a video of that when we're done. So still here in Clips, California in the master bath and taking a look at the shower. So it's a Moen Troll valve, our least favorite valve to work on in the world. And the reason being is it's a total of three cartridges. We, we uh, <clears throat> Up top, you've got a 11, 16, 49, I can't remember the name of the, uh, this is a diverter cartridge, which is separate than anything else that Moen uses. It's only specific to here, but we don't believe there's anything wrong with the diverter. Three of your spray heads work. One of them, I believe, is just clogged, whichever one it was. We'll check it when we're done, but uh, we don't believe the diverter cartridge. We don't have one. They're a special order five days out. We can certainly replace it if it needs to, but I think this one's fine. This is just a standard 1220 cartridge. 1225 cartridge and it came out seemed like it was okay but you know if the house has been offline for a couple years you just really want to change your cartridges out so 1225 cartridge 25 bucks for this and then of course this um <clears throat> uh balancing spool that's where the trouble is what typically when you're you don't have hot or cold something going on and that needs to be replaced it's supposed to what it does is it fluctuates back and forth there's a little ball or a little shaft inside that goes back and forth and um, that's what keeps you from getting scalded. You're in here taking a shower, someone flushes a toilet, that little spool goes back and forth and it allows less pressure to come in from whatever side is being drawn so you don't scald yourself in the shower. So here's what's supposed to happen. This is the old one. If you shake it back and forth, you can see it's stuck in there. Now there are ways you can go in here and try and disassemble this and get this to float freely in there. But in doing so, you spend a lot of time and you could actually damage it and then of course you've got a problem the new one when you go back and forth you can hear that's nice and free floating now so that's good so that's what we're going to put in you got a brand new balancing spool uh, you'll have a brand new 1225 cartridge on the bottom and then we'll put it all back together actually we won't put the trim back on yet we're going to turn it on and make sure everything is functioning correctly and then of course the last one we'll, we'll take a look at with your spray head that's not working correctly see if we can get it off the wall and and Maybe you just have to soak it in some vinegar and that'll be that'll be that. But anyway, so that's the Moen Troll valve. Horrible. Love Moen. Great company. Great support. Hate that valve. So nothing but trouble. Anyway, so we'll take another video when we're done. 
Still here in Clovis, got this valve back together now. And uh, so you have hot and cold back here. Functionality, uh, you'll just have to get used to it. This diverter valve, of course, it still works. The only one that's not working right here is this one. We did get the the cover off and asked the homeowner to soak it, but when we turned the valve on, no water came out here. So something's happening with the point of connection. We did take a wrench and try and unscrew this, but it's tight. And the problem is if you go too far and something breaks, now you're into a repair. I'm not sure what's on the back side of the wall, probably the bedroom. And so we got to cut it in the wall and figure it out. I don't want to do that to you, so we're just going to leave that like it is. Uh, even after you soak it, it's not going to change it. These three are working fine, but like I say, these guys, and uh, you can just unscrew them and soak this, the rubber gasket comes out, these little, uh, these little holes right here, so that whole gasket comes out, you can soak them and get it done. So, hot and cold water at the shower. Of course, that rain hour shed is leaking pretty good. You don't have to keep that arm if you don't want it. Just put a new arm in, fix shower head, and you're good to go. But everything back here is good outside of that. These installations are done.